Phil Spencer recently had an interview with Xbox on where he dove into the Activision Blizzard acquisition. He talked about game exclusives and what happened with um, titles like the future Elder Scrolls titles and more specifically Starfield. And it was a really, really interesting piece. I thought today I would dive in and talk about a few of the uh, important things that we should look at right now. So let me just bring up the initial quote that everybody ended up sort of latching on to. I'm going to make sure that audio is on for it. Um, yeah, so basically, this is the one that everybody latched on to when talking about content exclusivity around Call of Duty. We expect to ha hit a certain level of quality on all of those games, the mm -hmm. level of quality that PlayStation players expect. So that's our goal. And the same thing on PC and the same thing on Nintendo. So when we say available everywhere or not exclusive, we want to make absolutely the best version of Call of Duty for any yeah. player on any of those platforms. So basically the long and the short of it is what he's trying to explain is no, there is no intention whatsoever to degrade the Call of Duty experience for any specific platform. Uh, and they really, really dove into this in the interview where they talked about what that means specifically. They said, we never had in our model anywhere where we're pulling COD or something away from PlayStation. And uh, I ended up pulling this from Idle Sloth who, who did the transcribing also. So thank you, Idle Sloth for the, uh, doing that over on Twitter. He also pointed out that we want to build a gaming platform where the world's best creators can build games to reach players anywhere. The logic really started from how do we gain more capability on mobile, both creatively as well as having users. The real strategy is we need to get relevant on mobile, and it turns out that Activision Blizzard is the largest mobile publisher outside of China. So that was all via Xbox on. And actually, somebody sent me something where... Um, I don't know why it was it was shocking, but basically in the interview with um, who was it? The Times, he reinforced that, yes, they are focusing on mobile. Now, they've been reinforcing this for some time that they want to focus on mobile. But here's what the, the user sent to me. In a new interview, Microsoft's Xbox head Phil Spencer suggested that the company wants to create a rival to Google Play Store, but it will initially focus on gaming. We definitely get support from regulators when we talk about opening up mobile and being a credible third-party alternative on those devices. And we're a long way from there today. So this person thought it was important because it's a combo multi-hit. Regulators want a viable alternative to the App Store chokehold by Google and Apple. Microsoft could potentially break it, but need the Activision Blizzard deal to go through to make it viable. Now, I've actually talked about this before because it's really odd that they bring up, that the regulators bring up that Apple and Google sort of have a stranglehold on the mobile industry, and then they don't want this deal to go through because of their concerns about it becoming a monopoly. But Xbox is saying, look, a big reason we want this to go through is because it would break up the monopoly that those particular companies have on the mobile industry. I do believe Microsoft that mobile is a important part, but I have to imagine purchasing a game like Call of Duty, which everybody has admitted makes a lot of money for them, is going to really help them develop games of their own uh, the same way that Sony says the revenue from their Call of Duty sales helps them develop first party games. Good thing for Sony because Xbox is offering them better terms. So they're going to be able to develop more games if the deal goes through. If it doesn't go through, it will be interesting to see what happens with those relationships. Before I continue on recording this one really, really late tonight because I had to get some Destiny in and uh, my TV's being weird with Metal Gear. But anyway. I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers, so if you're one of the people who aren't subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell. Help me get to that goal. We are very close. We're down to like 820 people need to subscribe. So yeah, for real, if you all subscribe today, we would hit the goal today. Thanks for watching. Let's dive back into another quote from that thing. We want to increase the places where people can play Call of Duty by nurturing the creative make sure the game evolves and the teams have the resources they need to build a great game because in the end, it's all about great games. Before I go to the notes that I put below that, 
just remember that Call of Duty is a huge revenue driver for everybody in the industry, not just PlayStation, who have brought it up several times, also Xbox. I can't imagine why they would ever want to purposely make the product worse for anybody. Like that argument I feel like is moot and it's a little bit ridiculous. And there are some rumblings that the EU and China could potentially be leaning towards letting the deal go through. I'll talk about those in a second video I plan on making for the day. Continuing on though. Notes, no, they won't pull a Hogwarts Legacy exclusive mission type thing. This is something that PlayStation has done since the PlayStation 4 era where like Call of Duty or not Call of Duty, Destiny would have exclusive strikes or exclusive exotics. And I hated it uh, to the point where Bungie had a reveal once. And I said, no, nobody likes this. <laughs> like I play on PlayStation, but this isn't the type of game where anybody is going to celebrate the fact that exotics are locked behind a platform. And I, I played on the PlayStation 4 for uh, Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 until it went to PC, and then I just went full-time on PC because I just like PC controls better. But anyway, uh, it's just it's just such an old style of exclusive content. Yeah, it works, but hopefully we can evolve past that. Like, if you're going to do an exclusive like the Final Fantasy 16 one coming up, I think that's fine, or like the Starfield one that's coming up. But um, I don't like it when they piecemeal out a game and, and do missions and things like that. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, on Starfield, exclusive titles are part of the business. Yeah, so just sort of agreeing with him on that. I, yes, they bought uh, the company. In my opinion, if you pay billions of dollars for a company, you should be able to make all the games exclusive if you want to. The fact that they didn't, with ESO and they didn't with uh, Fallout 76 was surprising to me. Even uh, the Call of Duty news, when the Call of Duty news came out initially, I was like, oh my God, they're gonna make Call of Duty exclusive. And then now they're revealing that was never part of their plans. But uh, yeah, so yes, exclusives are part of the business. The issue I take with Sony is that Sony does it and then when somebody else does it, they say, you're not allowed to do that. It's like, you do it all the time. You did it with Spider-Man. You did it with Final Fantasy. You did it with several other titles. I can't think of off the top of my head. But uh, the point is, it's it's sort of an industry standard. Let's go to qu quote three. We're mostly focused. Oh, yeah, this was interesting. We're mostly focused on June. But between now and June, expect some GoldenEye type announcements and games available in different services. We have Redfall, Minecraft, Legends, Starfield, and Forza coming this year. And uh, he also pointed out that they, he's getting to see Hellblade 2 and how far along that is. Could we be getting a Hellblade 2 reveal near the end of the year? I think that would be great. Uh, a release date would be even better. We'll see what happens with that game, but uh, that's one that I'm really excited about. Even though I'm very excited about Hellblade 2, I do not think that game will sell the way that a Call of Duty would sell or even Forza Horizon would sell. It just is not going to have the mass appeal of a game like that, but I do think it could be one of those games that actually get them at the award show at the end of the year. So anyway, yeah, uh, we're at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, like 820 people need to subscribe. So if you're not subscribed, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit that bell, and we would hit the goal today. Uh, half of you aren't, so I, I know you could help me get there. Anyway, thank you so much to the members. I'm recording this too late. I've been procrastinating on these because I like, I'm exhausted and everything. But anyway, thank you to the members for supporting the channel and me making these videos. If you want these with no ads, click that join button. I can't promise they won't be rambly. But if you want to see another rambly video, you can check out the one I did yesterday where a reporter is saying that if this deal fails, Microsoft could actually be spun off. That's crazy. Let's dive into that video there. I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.